Hey guys, it's Demi from Demi's Divine Designs, and today we're going to be making another bag, but we're not going to be using our sewing machine. We are going to be using an embroidery machine, and we are going to be making a coffin bag from Off With Their Threads Designs. Let's get started and head over to the computer, showing you where to get the designs and how to download it. Website. Their designs are incredibly funny, and I highly suggest you sit there and just go through all of them. You will be cracking up laughing as you're going through, and her stuff is beautiful. But for this pattern in particular, we're going to go over to In the Hoops Bags and Wallets, and we are going to look for the bag that we are looking for. She has tons of different designs. So let me find ours again. And here's the design. It is so cute, and my husband and I just started playing uh, Resident Evil 4, the remake, so <laughs> the zombie looks like a Resident Evil zombie, which is why I picked this bag. When checking out for this bag, make sure you check the size. There are different sizes for hoops. You can get the 5x7, the 6x9, 7x11, 8x12, or you can just get all of them. For this pattern, I am only going to be using my 5x7, so I'm just going to leave that selected and I'm going to add that to cart and check out. Once you have that checked out, you'll be able to go to your account and see your, um, see your recent purchases. And you can click here, as she has it here and here, <laughs> to download your designs. This is the first design that we're doing, which is the return coffin zipper, lined and unlined. And you're gonna see that it's gonna download as a zip file. So make sure you download that and have that come down to your downloads. Open that up. And you're gonna see that we have all of these different files. Now, how do you know which file you're gonna use? That is based on which machine you have. For my Rakoma machine, I need a DTS, which is this first file here. For Brother, I know you need a PES, which is down here, and I don't know what the other ones are for because I haven't worked with any other embroidery machines. Once you know which file you're going to need, keep that in mind. The next thing that we're going to look at is the color sheet. That is going to show us the order of our stitches. And she has them labeled out here very nicely. She shows you which uh, steps you're going to need and what colors you're going to need if you choose to do it according to how she does. You can, of course, change the colors. It's your bag. You change it how you want to change it. So keep this up. And if you need to know what your measurements are for cutting, this, cutting the fabric for the bag, she has a PDF for you showing how to cut your materials. She also has a tutorial showing you how to um, go through these bags. We're going to be doing the lined one today. So I'm going to open up the lined tutorial. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to scan through this since it's not going to be the same bag that we're making. She's just showing you the basic process of how you need to lay your fabrics down, what you're going to need for the bags, so on and so forth. So let's transfer this over to our machine. And now we're going to transfer our file onto our USB so we can bring it over to our uh, embroidery machine. So make sure that you have your USB plugged in. Mine should pop up any second. There it is. Grab the file that works for your machine. For me, I'm doing a DTS since I'm stitching on a Rakoma machine. Transfer that over. You can double check and make sure that it went, which it did. And then make sure you eject your USB before bringing it over to the sewing machine and getting everything started. For this project, material-wise, what you're going to need is two of your top cuts one of your exterior, one of your lining. I'm using scraps of vinyl and scraps of water resistant canvas. Two of your bottom cuts, again, one of your exterior, one of your lining. Two of your back cuts, one of your exterior, one of your lining, and a zipper. I like to use the pre-made zippers for these. I'm also gonna do a scrap of vinyl so I can create a little pull tab. This isn't in the pattern, I just like to use it. Other supplies that you're going to need for this design is uh, multiple layers of tearaway stabilizer, your 5x7 hoop, and your colors for your uh, thread. 
So let's head over to the machine, get that loaded, and get the stitching. Now that we're over at the machine, let's load our design in using our USB. Take your USB, and on the Recoma EM1010, there is a port right here where you can plug your USB in to load your designs, which is what we're going to do. Plug that in. And then we're going to select this file button, which will bring you to this screen showing you what is on your USB. Select the design that we are going to be working with and hit this machine icon, saving it to the memory of the machine. Then head over to your machine memory. And when you save designs, it goes to the end of your machine memory list. So go to your end and select your design. Once it's selected, hit OK. And then that is going to load into your uh, working space. See how it's bigger than our hoop? What we're going to do is go into de design set and we're going to rotate the design, hitting this uh, button with like the F's going in like a box. Select that and turn the design, hitting an F like laying down. And that turns our design, making it fit inside of our hoop. Hit OK. And that's going to bring us back to the memories. That's going to save that. And then we hit Escape to go back to the memory screen. Load up your hoop. I have two layers of tearaway stabilizer in my hoop. And I'm just going to load this into place while I fight with it. Pew. Get in all. Once you have your design loaded and fitting inside of your hoop on the display, what we're going to do is we're going to load in our colors. We can do this by looking at the color sheet that shows you what colors in order you have to do, as well as using the lined zipper instructions to help show you which steps you're going to be at for plugging in the colors. So our first color is going to be our placement stitch. To load in these colors, what you're going to do is you're going to go to the second button down on the left of your machine that has the three thread spools, selecting that. For the first couple of stitches, this is all going to be placement and securing stitches, so you're not really going to see these. So keep that in mind when picking your colors. It doesn't really matter for these first couple of steps. So I'm just going to do my neon green, which is in step seven. Uh, thread seven, not step seven. <laughs> so the first one is a placement stitch showing you how everything is going to line up. Then we have the zipper stitch securing the zipper down. I'm again going to go seven. Next, you have your top uh, securing stitch. So again, we're going to go seven. Then your fourth stitch out is going to be securing the bottom fabric on. Your steps five and six are going to be doing a top stitch holding the top and the bottom fabric away from your zipper. So this is the first color that you are going to see. Make sure it is a color that will look good on your fabric. I am going to do my silver since I'm doing a silver vinyl for my exterior, which for me is in spot two. And I'm doing that for both stitch five and six. Now the next couple stitches that we're going to do are going to be, going to, be to stitch out the zombie face. So make sure you use the colors that they show you in the color chart if you're doing the zombie to look just like her zombie. For me, it'll be a yellow, and that'll be needle six. Then she goes a dark green, 10 for me, white, which is needle three, black, needle one, then after you're done putting in the design steps, which will be steps seven, eight, nine, and 10, your next four steps are going to be attaching your lining and attaching your back onto the bag. So go through and pick your colors. Again, this doesn't matter. So I'm just gonna go neon green all the way through. Seven, 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 seven. Booyah. And this stitch out has a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 color changes. This can easily be done on a single needle machine as well, like a Brother PD800. I just don't like to change my colors that much. And with there being 14 color changes, I don't feel like doing that. 
once you have that all prepped, make sure your machine, if you're doing a uh, multi-needle machine, is set to automatically change the color, but manually start your stitch. So automatic manual, so you can do the adjustments that you have to do in between each stitch color. And then once that's set, hit OK. And now we're good to go on to stitching out the design. Once you have your colors chosen, you are all set to start prepping the design. So we are good. Set your machine into embroidery mode and start on the first stitch out. After the first stitch out is done, it is going to show you the placement for where all of your fabrics and zipper goes. For the next step is going to be our zipper. So take your zipper and lay it right side up over the box that the machine stitched out. We're gonna slide this here. You can tape this down with washi tape, which is what we're gonna do to hold this into place while we stitch. And we're gonna move our zipper more towards the center-ish. You can also take the hoop off of the machine if you would like to put your zipper on that way. I don't mind doing it like this, so we're gonna let it rock. I'm gonna put the machine back to its starting position and hit go so it can tack down the zipper. That part is always extremely nerve wracking because of how close it gets to the zipper pull. Whew. Okay, now that we made it through that, we're going to go on to attaching the top piece onto the hoop. So pull your hoop back out. You can either take this off or you can go through and um, take it off or you can just mess with it here. And double checking the pattern, it's not going to close this zipper for a while. So I'm actually going to pull my tape up and move my zipper pull out of the way like that. I don't need the washi tape anymore because the zipper is tacked on. So I'm just going to peel that out of the way. Get your exterior uh, top piece and lay that right side down over the zipper, lining your raw edge up with the raw edge of your zipper. And you can tape that into place as well. I'm again just going to use my washi tape and just tape that down, just holding it in place. It's not going to be too crazy, so not worried about it entirely. And then load that back and hit start. Once that's tacked on, we can peel up our tape and fold our exterior top fabric out of the way. We can tape this if we would like, which I'm gonna do. Okay, once you either get it taped down how you like it or get sick of it enough, <laughs> you are good to grab your exterior bottom fabric. And that is the smaller of the two exterior cuts. Take that and you're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna lay the exterior down, lining that up. I led it, I led. We're gonna lay it down this way. <laughs> lining it up with the edge of our zipper. I am gonna get more washi tape to hold that into place as it does the tack stitch to hold that down. I can get my hand on the other side. So, wha-pow. Put that back in its starting position and hit go. And then we're going to repeat what we did for the exterior where we're going to peel this down and bend our bottom down, making a nice crease so it can do the top seam. Now, for this one, I'm probably going to do something dangerous. So if you're not comfortable with this, don't do it because I like to have a nice crisp seam. So I'm probably going to hold my pieces like this where I'm going to tug at this end here and I'm going to tug at the bottom down here. So it holds it in place as it creates this since my washi tape isn't strong enough to hold this down. And then hit go. Oh. 
and we're going to move on to the bottom piece again doing the same thing i'm tugging down here i'm not getting my hand by the needle and this is to hold this down so it flattens the fabric when it does the uh, securing stitch for the exterior all right perfect so now your exterior is completely attached I am going to trim up my threads that stuck out over here. And now I'm going to double check my zipper because it did look like when it stitched the top on, the fabric didn't want to pull away all the way. So it's got a little overhang. So I just want to make sure the zipper still works, which, oh yeah, she good, she good. Awesome. And now we're going to move on to stitching the zombie on the bottom panel. So set your machine. Get it ready to go and zombie time there is the first color of the zombie and now we're going to move on to the second There is the second, the green stitched out really nice. And now we're gonna move on to the white. Yes, white. And now that the white is done, we are moving on to the black, which is the main color in this embroidery design. So hit that and let's get that going. There is the black all stitched out. What we can do at this point before moving on to the final steps is trim up any threads or any uh, jump threads that may have happened. My machine did have the thread pop out of the needle a few times, but that's normal for this machine. Me and this machine like to fight each other. So just look around for any jump threads or any threads from starting and stopping and give those a nice trim before we move on to the next step. You could also do this after the bag is all done. And once we turn it right side out, I just like to do it now. And once you are happy with how your design looks, he has so much little detail, I love his little peepers. Uh, you are all set to move on to the final steps, which is attaching the lining and the back of the bag. Once you're ready to move on to the next step, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your lining top piece and your lining bottom piece and fold down at least in half, a half of an inch on the wrong sides, doing wrong sides together, creating a nice crease. You can press this, you can double side tape right along the edge. I wouldn't suggest double -siding, double, putting the double sided tape where your needle is gonna sew through it, just right along the edge if you're gonna do that. Since I'm using water resistant canvas, once I do the crease, it kind of stays. So we're just going to let that rock. For this part, we're going to pop our hoop off of the machine and we're going to attach our linings onto the bottom. You can do this at a table or you can just do it like this. So we're going to flip and I'm just going to rest this right here for now. And you can see the stitch lines as to where you need to line up your lining. <laughs> Say that five times fast. Haha. <laughs> so take your top and see where your zipper stitch 
is right along this edge showing where it attached your exterior to the to the zipper tape and that's where we're going to line up our lining right along the edge and we're going to uh, washi tape that onto the hoop keeping it in place because this part is going to be done without us being able to see it which is very nerve-wracking but we got this we got this if you're not comfortable with all these little like loosey-goosey threads you can go through and um trim those down burn those if you want i'm just gonna leave them alone they're gonna be covered by the lining anyway so i'm not worried about it but we're gonna press that down i'm gonna do my tape along the edge i'm gonna go both edges and i'm gonna go right along the top you want it to hang a little over that stitch where it attached the exterior so that then it obviously has something to stitch on. You just don't want it to have, be too close to that center line of that zipper box, since that'll be getting caught in your zipper. And if you get caught in your zipper, you can't use it. Like that, I'm gonna do one more along the top. And then that should be secure. Am I gonna check on it every like two seconds while it's under the machine? Yes. Do that for your bottom, I mean top. So it's going to look like this, where it's going to cover that stitch there, but not going too far down the center. Held in the tape. You could even use something stronger than washi tape. That is just what I have here. And we're going to do the same on the bottom. This one might be easier to hold down because we have more area to work with. So... Right, and once you're happy with your tape job, we're going to flip this over so we can no longer see the lining and we're going to put this back into place. I like to just hold my hand under the hoop, holding the lining into place as I slide it onto the machine just to make sure nothing gets caught anywhere and none of the tape comes undone. And just feeling my way, making sure everything is still on and secured. All right, then we're going to run the next step. And I'm again kind of going to hold my hand on the hoop just to make sure it doesn't fold. I'm not sticking my hand under the needle because, ouch, <laughs> I'm just going to hold at the edges and make sure that the folded part stays folded up in the corners. I actually don't like my paint job tape job. I'm going to switch that over to painter's tape because the washi tape doesn't seem to be strong enough to hold everything. Just going to do small pieces and the painter's tape I am going to try to keep out of my seams. I know you can sew through it. It's not going to cause that big of a deal, but I don't like it, so I'm not going to do it. Okay, so my tape job looks like that. It's gonna do the job, hopefully. <laughs> gonna hold that into place as we put it back on the machine, making sure that the tape doesn't unravel, doesn't like roll. Same with our exterior. Pop that into place. That feels good. All right, now that I think we're good, we are good to hit start and let it stitch the lining on. All right, once the top is attached, I do see we probably should have used a color that matched our exterior vinyl, but can't change it now. So we're just gonna let it rock. <laughs> Same for the bottom. It might look really cool. We'll find out. Okay, and once that's done, you can pull your hoop off 
and take the tape off of the back because that is secured now. And double check your stitches and make sure you've got everything, which we did. So we are good to pull our tape off. Once you removed your tape, the back of your design should look like this, where you have the right side of your lining facing you, and you can see the uh, securing stitch holding that into place on both the top and the bottom. We are gonna then move to the front, and we're gonna move our zipper towards the center. You don't wanna go too far over, just get it in the middle-ish like that. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our exterior back and lay that right on top of the design. You can tape this into place if you would want. Since this is gonna be on top, I'm kinda of just gonna hold it with my hands, but I'm never gonna get close to the needle with my hands. And once you have that prepped, we are good to load this back in the machine. Make sure you're good to go. And then secure your exterior back onto the bag. Perfect, and once the exterior is attached, we're gonna repeat the same for the lining, but we have to do that on the bottom side of the hoop. So pop your hoop back out, flip it over, and you'll see there's now an extra line of stitching. That is, that was the, that was securing the um, exterior onto the bag. Now for the lining, you're gonna grab your uh, lining back piece, and we're gonna tape that into place over the lining with right sides together. So we're gonna take our lining, right side of the canvas to right side of the canvas, the waxy side up, or the wrong side of your fabric up, and tape that into place, just making sure you are covering the stitches. It does not have to be exact, it's fine. <laughs> just get that on there and we are gonna flip this back over holding the lining on load your hoop back onto your machine and run the stitch the final stitch of the design And you will see with that one, it did leave a hole. That is what we're gonna use to turn the bag inside out. So once all of this is complete, we're gonna head over to our working table and we're gonna finish up the bag. Okay, once we have the design fully stitched out, what we're gonna do now is remove it from the hoop. Actually, I lied, we're gonna take our tape off first. <laughs> and now remove it from your hoop. <laughs> Put your hoop to the side. We no longer need it. And now what we're gonna do is we're going to trim around the design at about a quarter inch seam allowance. You don't wanna go too close, but you also don't want humongous seams. All right, perfect. Now you got all this trash, get rid of that. Nobody needs that. I'm gonna trim these corners because I wanna make sure we have nice pointy corners. So I'm gonna go wha-pow to get that point. Go like that just to make it easier. Like make the it a softer. See, same over there. I am not cutting through my stitches. I am just cutting through, I'm just cutting close enough to them to make the corner look nice. This one's gonna be interesting because I have the hole, but it'll be fine. Okay, awesome. Now we got more trash, put that out of the way. Now that we have it cut how we liked it, we're gonna turn it right side out. Once you get the lining side turned out, you see we still have this tearaway in the zipper opening. You can rip that out. Feel where your zipper is, rip it out either, or you can cut it out. I mean, 
whatever works for you. We could probably clean that more up once we get it turned right side out. So I'm not going to worry about it at the moment, because if I do, I will spend the next hour trying to make sure that I cut it as close as I can. So once you have this, stick your finger in and open your zipper the rest of the way so you can turn it with the lining out. To close up this hole, what we're going to do is we're going to fold the raw edges in to that uh, furthest stitch line from the edge. And we're gonna use clips to hold that into place. So grab those. Fold. And then we are just gonna stitch along that edge, holding everything down does not have to be pretty. I'm probably just going to go an eighth of an inch away from the edge, just holding these two down. It's the lining. You're never going to see it anyway. Now that you have that stitched, we're going to turn this with the exterior out. The bigger the bag is and the type of material you use, the easier this is going to be. I did a tiny, tiny bag with <laughs> vinyl and waterproof canvas. I paid the price. To get these, this bottom part out, cause that's tiny, my hand is small, but it ain't that small. I'm gonna use my blunt, like my rounded edge of my stiletto seam ripper combo and kind of just push everything out that way. All right, perfect. And once you have that turned right side out and your zombie all poked out how you like them, gonna poke down here a little bit more. Okay. It is going to look like this, where it is in the shape of a coffin. And it's a really good size for it being the smallest size bag in the size options, that's a pretty decent size. That's gonna be able to hold your seamless ripper stiletto. You might be able to hold pens. Let's see, I got pen. Yes, okay. So this would be awesome for like a pencil pouch. Load that up. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. I cannot wait to go show everybody this because this is awesome. Can you stop making noise? This came out so cute. Look at it. Oh my gosh, that's adorable. And it wasn't that difficult. Turning it right side out was a bit difficult, but I think that was just because of the material I used. But overall, this thing is adorable. Spooky, spooky, spooky. So I had a lot of fun making this and I highly suggest you guys try it. I kind of want to try a bigger size. I wonder, I got to look at what my biggest hoop is now because I want to try it. <laughs> this is so cute. And this is a great scrap project. She has tons of different bags like this that you can make on her site, which I do highly suggest you check out. Author, all but their threads, embroider designs, crack me up every time. My husband laughs at me constantly because he'll know when I'm looking at her site because I'll just be sitting there scrolling and just start giggling to myself. And he's like, what? I was like, ah, chicken butt. <laughs> it's just like childish humor, which I find so funny. They are the cutest things and her bags are so fun. If you guys enjoyed making this uh, embroidery bag with me, please let me know. I do probably want to be doing a lot more um, embroidery tutorials like this. He turned out so cute. I think I'm going to name him. What do I want to name him? Let's name him Gerald. He looks like a Gerald. He's got it in his eyes. So hello, Gerald pouch. This was really cute. I really liked making it. I highly suggest you guys try it. So head over to offwiththeirthreads dot com and look through all of her embroidery designs. She also has a Facebook group, which I highly recommend you joining. She runs tons of different sales, 
promotions. You can just see like sneak peeks as what designs are coming out. So cool. It's a fun group to be in. If you guys have any questions about this pattern or any other patterns on that site that you would like to have me do a tutorial for, please let me know in the comments. I really appreciate you guys hanging out with me today. If you could like, comment, subscribe if you want, hey, that would be awesome. I can't wait to see you guys next time. Bye.